to the Dandy Safe channel, and my DIY for today has absolutely been inspired by P. Allen Smith. I don't know if any of you watch him, but I absolutely love his show. And anyway, it drew to me an idea. I have this leftover Christmas wreath that I got from Dollar Tree, and I honestly didn't know what to do with it. So I think we might be able to get a star out of it. We're certainly going to give it a good try. The next item is going to be either some chicken wire or you can use the wire from the waste basket or the baskets that we get from Dollar Tree. Some burlap, and I'm sure some of you have that in your arsenal. Some reindeer moss or floral moss, rather. This is actually the floral moss from Dollar Tree. It will work better because it's kind of like in a sheet. Or if you have picked up the flora mat sheets from Walmart. These have a sticky back on them. We're going to be using hot glue, so have your glue gun. Let me clear this off here and we'll get started. In regards to this particular wreath, I am going to show you that on the back side here is just a twist tie for this bow. So we're going to take that off. And besides, it has a bell. And we, we definitely need to remove it first. So the bell is tied on by this golden cord. I've cut that. And then the bow was twist tied on. And I save all this for later DIY. The next thing, of course, is this price tag, which, you know, may come off when we're unraveling this. The other thing I wanted to show you is in about anywhere on this particular reef, it is kind of twisted around. And I haven't found the per se beginning because I did want to share with you guys what I'm doing. So I started kind of untwisting it, and it's wrapped around this wire. So I may end up, which is what I'm going to do, is clip it so that I can have a starting end and just unwrap it from this wreath. So you guys will have to do the same. Once you removed all that garland wrap around it, you'll have a wire that resembles this. There's actually two looper wires that this slides into and it locks them into place. When I was pulling and yanking and reshifting them, I didn't get them asphyxiated correctly, and mine actually blew off in the room here somewhere. So the idea here, though, is we are going to be shaping this into a star. So if yours come apart, that's fine. Don't worry about it. We're going to work it out from there. So the next thing is forming our star. Okay, on each end of your circle where it came apart, you're going to bend it at a point. And I literally just have the circle apart, and I've taken and I've bent it to a point, one in my left hand and one in my right hand. Now that I've done that, I want to meet these, and down here at the opposite end, I'm going to form it in sort of a point. Just, you know, follow me here. So you've got a point here, a point here, and then one here. And believe it or not, this is going to be our very top one. And then you have your bottom ones. So to form our five-point star, we need the sides to become pointed. So we have our triangle, per se. And, you know, this does not have to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close because if you're doing the middle down from these two, then you'll have kind of like a funny looking heart. All right. So in order to get these two at a point, think about it, we have to go outward. So since we made these two bends at hands width, this one we want to stay at hands width. So that means at this point, just drop down, just kind of spread your pinky out, and you're going to bend him out. Same thing over here. Hold it in your hand's width at your pinky and just bend it out, okay? We can adjust these at any time we want, but that's going to pretty much be about the shape we need. 
So now we have this side going to the right. So this was the center. Now we're moving to the right. And at hands width, once again, we need to bend it back. Okay? So it's kind of looking like that right there. Hope everyone's able to follow this. So we need this to become a point, this hand, this area to be a point in order to match up to this one. And since we've got this bent back and this one bent back, so hopefully this will work out to where we can take our thumb, put them together, and bring that out to a point. Okay? See, so everyone's done that. Same thing over here. We're going back to our center and one that we had hands with. And this one at hands with, since we don't have an area here, we need to do our hands with our pinky and we're going to bend it back. I hope everybody's with that. Once again, we have our center and now we have our one on the left. We're going to place our thumbs in the center of that long stretch and we're going to bend it towards each other. Bring those in just like that. And there we have our star. I hope everybody was able to follow that. Now that means you're going to have two small arms and three large arms. But now that you've got your star shaped and see that little area that I left where the tang was earlier? We can hook it together, and that will make our star. So if you want to make your star better than this and even out these areas, then you'll just need to equal it out. Now, these, if you still have the wire locks that held this reef together, you can slide them together and press them tighter with your needle nose pliers and hold your form. And that way you have your star form. This time I'm going to work on mine and get it a little bit straighter, and I'll be right back. So now I've been working on, you know, shaping my star a little bit better. And yes, they are going to be more rounded. Uh, you'll prefer that over a point. This is actually a little pointy, but that's okay. The idea is to get our five-point star. It's a floral wire, and I'm basically just going to tie these two together so that it keeps its shape. And then we'll be ready to move to the next step. So do the same as me just takes a small amount. They don't have to, uh, you don't really have to go to town on this unless you just feel like it's going to pop apart. But if you've been bending it and working it and shaping it, then just wrap your little bit of floral wire around that and just enough for it to keep its, you know, to keep the form because that's what we need. We're roughly going to have about a 10 and a half inch wide star. So our next move, once we've got our mesh cut into basically a rectangle to go around this, just to make it easy, I will probably wrap my wire on the sides first and get those to form. And this is not going to be a three-dimensional star. This is just going to be a front frontal star. So once we get the wire wrapped around there, do the best that you can. Uh, maybe at the sides you might want to go ahead and bring your mesh or your chicken wire around these corners, these points that are the furthest out in a coronal, not a three-dimensional. Um, so just do the best you can and be careful of the wire. Clip at the tang if you have to and just bring it around um, wherever you need to form your star. And just, you know, pay attention when you're bringing your wire about so that it is making that form. If you have to, you'll just have to go back and clip. Just be really careful and wrap your wire around the tangs from wherever it stretches to. That's what I do. And then you can just push it in to dent it where you need to and wrap it a little snugger. So I'll be doing this off camera because it will take a moment to get this done. Um, the points are not going to be a big deal because we're actually going to be covering this with burlap. And that's what we'll be sticking our moss to. So I'll be back momentarily once I've gotten mine wrapped around. Now I've gotten my star wrapped with the chicken wire and just pressed it in where I needed to to make it form. 
uh, the mesh that I had from the wastebasket was a leftover piece and it was not enough to encase the entire star. So that is why I got my chicken wire. So that is why I used the chicken wire versus the mesh. If I'd had enough of the wastebasket mesh, I would have used it. So at this point, we want to take our burlap and cut us a piece and we're going to be attaching the burlap to our star. And then that will pretty much get us ready for the next step. The best way to do the burlap, I would think, is perhaps go where the two points are on the side and cut that burlap to where it will be able to be brought around to the rear. So I'm just going to do it up into that area, not all the way, but just enough so that I can take and fold this around where I need to. And as you guys know, whenever you're uh, gluing burlap, it will seep through. So just be careful when you're putting your glue on there. Just You just need enough to get it to attach to the other side of the burlap or to the wire, whichever works the best. Just do, you know, just be careful in bringing that about um, we do want to use the glue simply to make sure that the burlap stays in place for us until we get it on there because we will be attaching the moss to the burlap. And that's this particular project, I think that the uh, regular floral moss will be the best because it's loose and you can kind of fit it to where you want it, so to speak. Now... I've got my burlap wrapped around my star, and if you've done the same, yours should be looking pretty much like this. Um, I didn't cut off any excess. I just folded it under and glued it on the back because, you know, it's not less is more, more or less. Um, so I just kept it back there, and they'll give more cushion too, and I don't want any of these sharp wire scrubbing against the back surface of anything I put it on. And I won't have to worry about going back and putting something on the back of my star where I folded that burlap back here. It's going to definitely keep the wire from touching anything. And it's going to give a great anchor for the floral moss to attach. Here's the floral moss. And usually with this, you can work it pretty good. To be careful again with gluing this. And you'll begin attaching this floral moss to your star. Great thing about using this floral moss is we'll be able to make this form a little bit better, a little bit straighter. Um, if any of you struggle with that or had any trouble, uh, don't fear because you'll be able to take care of that. And you'll be able to get it formed up any way you want. So in the beginning, you just want to cover your burlap with the moss and just work at it until you get it all covered. I'm actually not concerned about this being really thick. I just want the burlap covered and to give it the appearance that it's just like really uh, engulfed with the moss is really all I'm concerned about. And as you see, you know, there is no right way and no wrong way to do this. Just get your star covered and work with it all around. And then wherever you need to fill in, that's what you do. You just simply fill it in. So now that we've got our floral moss glued onto our star, it should be looking something like this. Now, this is a new product that I've seen at Dollar Tree. It is a multi-purpose adhesive spray. Uh, this particular adhesive spray, I've been using it in place of hairspray. So on something like this, I'll just give it a light mist and it's clear and there will be no tack. Once it's dry, there's no tack. And you would just basically take this and spray a fine mist onto your star. And that would prevent the moss from coming off. No shake off. Uh, so it'll stay intact and they'll keep it from you know, sparkling and sprinkling on everything as well. Um, I love doing these 
tussies. This is actually what you call a flat face tussie. Uh, it is not three dimensional. It's not a tussie mussy. Um, and the floral greenery that we're putting on it is a way of bringing the outdoors indoors and kind of getting that greenery effect beyond Christmas. You could do this at Christmas, but the great thing is we can use this. It can transition between the new year and for everyday use. So the next step is basically to decorate our star. So I have a few things here. I picked up this pick when I was at AC Moore during my haul before Christmas. So I basically got this little bundle of uh, berries, and you see there's silver, there's a glittery one, and a pearl-like one. And these berries will work great for every day, as well as work really well, you know, for New Year's. And uh, if I keep it up beyond that, it's going to look just fine. Um, so basically a dollar for that. I had gotten some of this glittery ribbon from Dollar General. Uh, it was the 12-foot, and it seriously is a glitter ribbon. And I also picked up this satin one. This one came from Dollar Tree, and this works really good. It's got those colors. And some of you may have gotten some of this uh, mesh ribbon. Uh, this was at Dollar Tree, and Dollar General also had this. So I got this one at Dollar Tree. And then, of course, I have my burlap from Dollar Tree. So let's see what we can come up with. As you know, I like staying in the southern dec decor with my burlap. And this one is a wire. And then with the berries, I think I'm going to somehow fix them on there. And then I just need to decide on which ribbon I want to use along with my burlap. Either one of these will suit very well. They'll go really, really good. And then, like I said, I can remove that once new year is gone or i can leave it on there it simply depends on your decor so let's see what we can do with these berries first i think because of the way these are laid out i might be better to pull these loose and then decorate with them as i wish you know and just tie some of these together i love buying them like this because you can literally just pull them off and use them however you many you want you can use the whole thing but it might be a little awkward trying to position that on this star and it really depends on where I put it if I'm going to do it all up top or if I plan on doing this all about my star okay so I've been working with my berries and I decided that when I pulled them all loose I would twist them around each other and just kind of stagger them almost like a descending waterfall effect and I've laid them there just to try and model them and see you know just stage it and see how I want them to lay in working with the ribbons I've decided I am going to use a little bit of this mesh ribbon uh, for the color and the contrast I really like that and I think what I'm going to do is just basically cut a piece about yay long you see this piece is actually around nine inches long and I'm just gonna like turn it like this and just kind of lay it there to stage it momentarily and so just to kind of leave it there that's really all I'm gonna need of that mesh at this point basically where I want it to be now taking my burlap ribbon I'm going to cut me two four inch pieces because that's what I want my tail to be two actually four and a half inch pieces so two four and a half inch pieces be safe I'm going to cut a 12 and a half inch length so this piece is 12 and a half inches and I'm going to take and fold it to the center and fold this one to the center and just overlap them just ever so slightly and the, that would be my midpoint and I just bring this down to it and then I fold and tuck I just cut off enough jute twine and using it bring it to the back 
and just basically tie it. And you you don't have to, but if you've got hot glue and that's all you have handy, you can put a small amount there if that will help you to hold it. You could also use a um, clothespin or a paper clip, whatever you need to help you to hold it together. And it should pretty much stay there. The wire in the ribbon helps hold it together. And then I just take my jute twine, and the jute twine is really uh, not necessary if you feel like you can keep it together while you build your other bow. But I'm going to be putting a silver bow on top of this one for this particular star. And so I'm just tying the jute twine on there so it'll free up my hands. Okay, so we've got this bow made, and these are our tails, or, you know, pinch and fold, and you can overlap these two if you like, and if that makes it easier, and then I will glue that behind where the bow is going to go. Once again, I pinch, and then I just overlap to the opposite way. And then that just helps that little pleat for my bow. So at this point, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just leave this ribbon mesh crossed over just like so. And I'm going to glue the tails right here as well as this bow. And because that ribbon mesh is hollow, and it really is a ribbon mesh, it shouldn't hurt to do that. It should glue straight to the moss back there. And I'm just, the reason why I chose to make this is once this form is made, we'll be able to use it over and over and over. And uh, you'll be able to, if it got kind of bare or it looked like it needed an update you will always have this form that you can use over and over again and so it's very easily renewed and and so now at this point I just want me a smaller ribbon bow to go there and so I've got this glitter one so now I have my bow tied together just like you would tie your tennis shoe type of bow so that looks like enough bling so to speak that we may want and of course we need to trim up our bow tails here and so I'm just going to glue that right there now a glue is all that will be needed for this little bow if I go this ang if I go angled let's try dovetails first and see how those look. If they suit us for this particular star. Okay, how is that looking? Can kind of and see enough of our ribbon here. See what we think. Then we can kind of move our bow up a little bit, scrunchy it up. So the tails aren't overpowering our little bit of ribbon mesh going there. And that's looking really cute. That will look really nice for New Year's. Just to be sure, I'm going to put a little glue on the very ends. And then place them back where I had them. And like I said, they can tuck in underneath your bow. Okay, that is looking very, very nice, guys. What do you think? We need to so let me put a small hanger on this. We'll place that in the back. I'm going to use some traditional jute twine.
Okay, guys, we have our moss covered star complete with bow and just a little bit of berries and some bling here for the new year. So now that we've got our star finished with our berries and our bow, I think that for New Year's to celebrate, let's place a little sash around our star. And this can be his New Year sashing, just like a beauty pageant. And this would look really terrific with a much wider ribbon. And if you needed to, you could put more than one on here. I think, just so it's positioned right, I'm going to put this going across this arm and just a spot of glue, just enough to hold that ribbon in place. And then let's check the front here. And let's put this sash part to hit right about there. And looky there, we have us a New Year sashing. We can easily take this off and put a, maybe a sashing across here for Valentine's. But we can now put some letters on there. I have these gold ones that I got from Walmart in the scrapbooking section. I don't know, I may just have to lay it on the moss. The great thing is, like I said, is after the holiday, after the New Year, is over with I can very easily change this out and put like a Valentine's on here okay guys I got the letters on there and these are sticker letters be aware that this is on moss you know so it's not gonna stick for a long period of time and I think that if you had it on the inside it's not gonna be bothersome but if you want something a little more permanent you could definitely take these and pin them directly to your ribbon this is just enough for the new year uh, it is upon us it's here in about five days so it's going to be here and gone in approximately four days to be exact so here we are at the end of our diy i hope you guys enjoyed this and we have our beautiful little star with our sashing and our letters and these can be taken off and changed out for valentine's and then you can use the rest of this for your general decor. You could even take the little silver ribbon off if you like. Uh, it really depends on the your decor and what look you're going for. This would work every day year round. Like I said, the sashing and the Happy New Year, you would probably want to remove, and that's probably what I will do. But I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. That right there, hit that thumbs up. And let me know, leave some comments and uh, Tell me what you like or didn't like or what you would do about it, uh, what you would change or do differently, or maybe offer some suggestions. Additionally, if any of you do any of these DIYs, any of the projects on my channel, please tag me on Instagram. If you're not part of the gang already, go over to Facebook, Dandy Soap DIY. You'll see the link down below and join the gang. There we can talk and chat and swap ideas and you can make comments and post pictures beyond YouTube comments. And we do appreciate everything. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, I certainly hope that you do. And like I said, tag me on Instagram. Share this with a family or a friend or someone who enjoys DIYs. And until the next DIY, you guys have a wonderfully dandy, crafty day.